everyone. Good Monday to you. Hope it was a good weekend for you. Some of us had a long holiday weekend uh, with President's Day for today, but back to the grind for many on Tuesday. And I do think that the weather will be pretty nice as we get into the afternoon, but uh, we do have a little wet weather to talk about and some warm temperatures to talk about in this video. And we'll talk about the longer range as usual towards the end. First things first, kind of an interesting stat today. It's February the 20th, and this is a notable date for us because it is the date in on the calendar that we have the biggest difference between our record high and record low. And both of these occurred last decade. We had 73 on today's date in 2018. We had 16 below zero on today's date in 2015 during that harsh February in the winter of 2014. 2015, that's a, a difference of 89 degrees and no other calendar date has a bigger spread than that from record high to record low. No records today, but the beat goes on. For two and a half weeks now, we've had above average high temperatures, 51 the high today for the month, 8.6 degrees Warmer than the average, this is no doubt going to finish uh, at almost at the very top of the list of warmest Februarys on record for our area. And we don't have much time left in meteorological winter, only about a week, really, because, of course, we consider meteorological winter to be December, January, and February. February is going to be over a week from tomorrow, and where we sit right now is at 34.6. Now, this factors in highs and lows. Uh, we're almost a degree or just a little... Uh, less than a degree shy of 1932-33 on the list of warmest winters on record. There's a chance we're going to catch 32-33 with 68 degrees coming up on Thursday. Even though we do have a big cool down on Friday, I think we're back above average by the weekend and probably into early next week. It's interesting, you know, this list is dominated by recent years and the 1930s. These were some of the warmest winters, and also we had some of the hottest summers on record during the Dust Bowl era back in the 30s. But look at the recent years, 15, 16, 16, 17, 2011, 2012, 1920, uh, beginning of this century, uh, and of course this winter, uh, towards the top of the list. And I do think there's a pretty good chance that uh, we reach number two before all is said and done. And of course, going along with this, the remarkable lack of snowfall for the winter and especially for February. We've only had 0.2 inches worth of snow at the airport Back in uh, February of 1998, during a super El Nino winter, we only had a trace during all of February, and that uh, that record will stand. There's a good chance this is our final total for, for February. We might pick up a trace amount on Friday if we get some flurries. Early next week at the very last minute, on the 27th, 28th, maybe, maybe we get a couple of snowflakes during that time frame. But uh, there's a decent chance that this is just going to be our final total. And that would be good for second place on the list of least snowy Februarys. Way too warm for any snow out there this evening. Much like this afternoon, we're tracking just a little bit of rain, especially in our southern viewing area. A couple of raindrops this evening from Selineville to Highland Town, over towards Wellsville, East Liverpool, and Calcutta as well. But uh, for the rest of us, uh, just some clouds for this evening. Those clouds will part later on tonight for a little while. In the meantime, lots and lots of real estate covered by winter storm warnings, winter storm watches, and winter weather advisories from the Rockies into the Northern Plains and even stretching into parts of New England. There's going to be a huge amount of snow, easily the biggest storm of the winter season uh, for some locations over the next handful of days. Places like Minneapolis, heading over towards La Crosse, Green Bay, maybe Milwaukee, but especially north of Milwaukee and the northern tier of Iowa parts of South Dakota, and then over towards Michigan and across into the Toronto, Niagara Falls, Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, Albany corridor, kind of that I-90 corridor or the New York State Thruway uh, will do really well with snowfall this week. But all that is going to be too far to the north for us. We uh, will also miss out on perhaps some impactful ice with this warm front pushing in Wednesday into Wednesday night into Thursday. So the mountains of Pennsylvania and also I-90 on north. Now this animation is going to stop uh, Wednesday uh, evening, but there could be a little bit more uh, before Wednesday night and Thursday morning are through. So places like Altoona, Johnstown, heading up towards Dubois and Clarion and Clearfield on I-80, uh, maybe up to Williamsport, and then I'd even be concerned about the I-86 corridor, Jamestown, uh, over towards Elmira, Binghamton, the Finger Lakes area might get uh, a decent amount of freezing rain out of this. But again, it's all to our north and to our east. We're going to have a chilly rain at times on Wednesday, but it's going to stay liquid, and I'm not real concerned about too many uh, shenanigans with frozen precipitation. There's a low-end risk of a little bit too much rain in parts of northern Ohio, and especially northwest Ohio. Uh, the Weather Prediction Center, part of NOAA, has uh, northwest Ohio, southern Michigan, northern Indiana outlined in a medium flash flood risk. I'm not real concerned at all about flooding around here, but I do think there'll be a decent amount of rain from midday Wednesday through about early Thursday morning, probably somewhere on the order of a half an inch to an inch worth of rain 
Uh, this will come in, in spurts. We'll probably get a burst or a spurt of rain midday, early afternoon Wednesday. Might let out, let off for a time late Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening before showers return Wednesday night and first thing Thursday morning. In the meantime, Tuesday, a couple of showers around in the morning. The afternoon will be sunny but breezy. Uh, and then here's the system for Wednesday. I think the uh, rain pushes in by the end of the morning. Now, I can't rule out as this pushes in a few sleet pellets and maybe an isolated instance of rain in about 32, technically freezing rain, but we're not expecting icing problems around here. Um, even if there's something other than just plain old rain for a brief time when this comes in, I would expect everything to just be wet Wednesday, midday, and afternoon. Again, the rain might try to let up for a time late Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, before showers return overnight. And then here we go with yet another record-challenging Thursday with clouds breaking for some sunshine. In fact, a lot of sunshine Thursday afternoon. A gusty breeze, probably not as windy as late last week on Thursday. Uh, but uh, the record of 69 set in 2017, I believe, on Thursday. That is definitely going to be challenged. We have 68 in the forecast now for Thursday afternoon. And much like the last couple weeks, we get this big warm up on Thursday and then a big cool down at the end of the week. So no higher than 30 on Friday with a gusty breeze. So once again, we're going to go from upper 60s to wind chill values, probably mostly in the teens and lower 20s on Friday. But just like the last couple of weeks, we rebound over the weekend. Now, it's not going to be a warm weekend, but it'll be a better weekend. 40 on Saturday, 43 on Sunday. It's hard to believe, but our averages are still in the upper 30s here this deep into February. Those are the long-term averages, but we've been above those averages every day now for two and a half weeks, and I don't see much in the way of change through the first week of March. So this is today's 8 to 14 day outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. Cold and stormy out west. Mild weather continues in the east with maybe an occasional shot of cool air, but just like it has been, maybe a day or two, that's it. Any cold quickly replaced by mild air. I do think as we get a little bit closer to the end of the month, I'm increasingly confident that we're going to have some colder spells that last more than just a day or two as we get deeper into March. I think the first week, maybe even 10 days of March, will be a general continuation of the January and February pattern. But we might see a pretty distinct pattern change by that second week of March. I'm starting to see that on the models. The models are, are trying to figure out what to do with the sudden stratospheric warming, where to put the cold air that gets dislodged from the Arctic. Um, some of it, no doubt, is going to go to Asia, but little drips and drabs might uh, come this far to the south. And while I don't see any evidence that it would be anything extreme, a pattern that will is chilly will seem kind of extreme considering where we've been for most of this winter. But yeah, we're going to close the book on meteorological winter in a little more than a week. We're going to do a full autopsy on on where the forecast went wrong and, and all the stats and stuff at the end of the month and the first of March. So look forward to that on here on Weather for Weather Geeks. I'll probably do a written blog post as well, and we'll probably do a little spring preview uh, with that winter recap. Look for that in about a week or so as we flip the calendar, hard to believe, towards March. Thanks for watching tonight. Let's do it again on Tuesday.